Today, what I want to talk about is the power to be calm. So I would like to start our practice today with a mindful minute. So just find a comfortable seat. If you're sitting in a chair, um, maybe sit at the edge of your chair with your feet both firmly planted on the floor. Today I'm sitting on the floor. Um, sitting on the floor is a great place to be. If you, if you have a cushion, you could sit on that cushion and just, just get comfortable. I see some of you doing this with your hands. You can do that if you want to, or you can just relax your hands in your lap. Or if you want to be standing, you can just have them, um, have your hands be right by your sides. So if you can and you feel comfortable, go ahead and close down your eyes. If you don't feel comfortable closing your eyes, just look down at the ground. We want to have nothing in our hands so that we're not sending any more signals to our brain. We just want to just sit in stillness, um, building the capacity to calm our mind. The way that we do this is we keep practicing, showing up and practicing calming our mind. So let's begin, take an inhale. Exhale. Breath in. Breath out. So you can roll your shoulders back, press down through your tailbone, lift up through your through the crown of your head, create a long spine. Check in with your breath. Noticing, is it fast? Is it slow? No judgment. Is it feeling shallow, coming into your neck, shoulders, chest? Or does it feel deeper where you can breathe all the way into your belly? See if you can notice the beat of your heart. Where do you feel it? Do you notice it in your fingertips, the palms of your hands? Can you feel it where your heart is? Just noticing. Check in with your jaw. You move it side to side, unclench. So notice how you're feeling right now. Do you feel excited, curious, maybe you're hungry, it's lunchtime, tired. Just acknowledging those feelings that you're feeling, bringing an awareness to that. Your eyes are closed, go ahead and open them. Reach your arms up. Bring your hands to your heart center. Take one more big breath in together and sigh it out. <sighs> Relax your hands and welcome to Monday afternoon mindfulness. So today I'm going to do a poll and what I would like to know is what superpower would you like to have if you could have one? So here's all these superheroes here. Would you like to have the power to be invisible? Sign into the chat, just say invisibility. If you want superhuman strength, you know, like um, Hulk, go ahead and type that into the chat. If you want super speed, like Flash, type that into the chat. If you would like to be a mind reader, I don't know who that guy is, but I picture like this redhead. I don't remember who he is. If you want to be able to teleport from place to place, type that in. If you would like to fly, have that be your superpower, type that in. If you want to have the ability to talk to the animals, type that into the chat. 
And if you already have a superpower, type that into the chat. So I'm gonna just kind of take a glance here and see what some of you are writing. Um, ooh, someone, time travel Dr. Strange. Thank you. Um, there's lots of people who wanna be able to teleport. Mind reading, superhero strength, talking to animals. The superpower that I wanna have, I wanna be able to fly. I think that would just be so fun and so amazing. So thank you for thank you for joining into the chat for our welcoming activity. So the reason I'm asking about what superpowers you want to have is because we're talking about the power to be calm. And so some of you know me, and some of you know that I have three uh, three little boys at home, and they are obsessed with superheroes. So we watch a lot of superhero movies, and I've been noticing um, how they film how they film the actions and how they get prepared and how they get ready to ready to battle and you know kind of like what their what their what their jam is um so it's just interesting to me you know so they all they all do something that's very similar in when they're getting ready to to battle they practice they reflect they they practice some more, they fail a lot, they practice some more, they keep getting up and practicing some more. And it's just like that when you're trying to teach your mind how to be calm. So the first engaging activity of today is going to be having an attitude of gratitude. So the more time that you the more time that you spend practicing mindfulness, the more connected your mind and your body become, which is really important. Um, there's simple tools that we can use to harness the power of calm in our life and the, harness the power of being less reactive, and being more proactive. So what I would like for you to do, you can see the little dragon there. He's got one hand on his chest, one hand on his belly. If, you, if that feels comfortable for you, sit like that. If you want both hands on your belly, do that. If you want both hands on your heart, do that. If you feel like resting with your head down, do that. Whatever feels comfortable in this space. I'm gonna go one hand on my heart, one hand on my belly. Take a breath in, breath out. What I would like for you to do is call to mind someone or something um, that you're really grateful for. So create a vivid picture in your mind's eye. And take a few minutes to just feel the gratitude that you have for that person or that thing. Send that person or that thing the energy of your gratitude thankfulness from your heart. And notice how thinking about that person or that thing makes you feel. Gently open your eyes. Now I'd like for you to call to mind another person or another thing um, for which you feel grateful for. So close your eyes. Picture that thing or that person in your mind's eye. And send all your gratitude, all your thanks, that powerful energy towards that person or that thing. Just picture it in your mind. Noticing how you feel when you think about that person or that thing. Take one more breath in. Breath out. Gently release your hands. Roll your shoulders. So notice how you're feeling right now. Do you feel calmer? 
feel more peaceful. So by practicing an attitude of gratitude, in addition to taking a mindful minute, this can help calm your brain, calm your body. So just notice how you feel. Why do we want to be calm? What is it, what is it that that does for us? Well, what we hope to do is have the ability to respond, taking that pause, you know, like Wonder Woman, I don't know, I love Wonder Woman. I don't know about you guys, I think she's awesome. Versus reacting when you're in the middle of chaos and you're just trying to put out fires, 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 right? Blocking, blocking, blocking. Um, or attacking, attacking, attacking. You know, so what we're doing by, by practicing mindfulness and, and practicing these simple movements through breathe, move, rest, we're teaching our brain to, to go to the calm. We're teaching our body what it feels like. We're noticing what it feels like when we feel calm. Superpowers don't come to our superheroes naturally. I already talked a little bit about this. You need to practice the power of calm engage in that practicing your craft of being calm repetition practice that's what we're doing so one of the things that you'll notice that i talk about is when we're practicing breathing is breathing in and out through your nose the benefits are this is that um, it filters the dust and the impurities from the air Another thing that it does for our bodies is it warms the air coming in to match our body temperature. And this way the diaphragm is more easily controlled and it supports the development of um, internal core strength and having more control over your inhalations and your exhalations helps activate that parasympathetic nervous system and that's where you can rest and digest. Increased oxygen from breathing in and out through your nose increases your energy and vitality as well. So you've seen this slide before. We did this the very first week that we were together. So some of you I know work at the district office. Some of you work in Central Kitchen. Some of you are bus drivers. Some of you are working in the classroom. I'm not sure how many teachers we have joining us today. Um, but whatever, wherever you are and whatever you do, it's really important. So this is called starfish breathing. You could also call it five finger breathing. So what I want for you to do is take your hand. You can look at it whatever way it works for you. You guys look at it this way. You can see my awesome nail polish. Um, sorry, I got distracted. So take your index finger and start at the base of your thumb. We're going to inhale, coming to the top. Exhale, go down. Breathe in to the top of your finger. Exhale to the bottom. Breath in. Breath out. Breathing in. Breathing out. Inhale. Exhale. And we're gonna go back up, go back to the top of your pinky. Exhale, release. Breathing in. Breathing out. Inhale. Exhale. Breath in. Breath out. Inhale. Exhale. So this breath again is called starfish breathing or five finger breathing. So you have your hand with you all the time. So you can always come into this breathing practice whenever you feel the need that you, to take a pause. Um, if you're working with our students or children, you can, you can print out this um, picture here and the kids can follow the starfish. You see the arrows going up and down, in, out, in, out. So you can do that. You can teach our students. You can teach your family. 
um, we're all sheltering in place or most of us are sheltering in place unless we are essential workers and we have to be out of our home. Um, you can teach those, those who you're with to, to practice this breath. Notice how you feel after doing some concentrated breathing. The next, this slide is behavior is communication. So many of you know that before I became a um, social emotional learning coach, I was in special ed department and I work, um, worked a lot with students with autism. And then I moved on into working with, um, with school sites on including children, all children in their general ed classrooms. And behavior is communication. So no matter what, if the kids don't have the words to tell you what they're thinking, feeling, their behavior is trying to tell you something. So if you look at their behavior, you have to be a detective, you know, trying to figure out what are they trying to tell me if they don't have the words to tell me. Even, you know, with my own kids and my husband, what is their behavior trying to communicate to me if they don't have the words? What is my behavior communicating to them? You know, I've, I've noticed that um, I'm just taking a lot more time to be present and be calm um, when I'm working with my kids. We're doing all these things online and it's really, I'm a teacher. I know how to do all this stuff, but it's really, really challenging navigating this new, this new paradigm, this new world with them. So I have to really be conscious of my breath. Um, Oftentimes I'm a head teacher for extended school year. So I know a lot of you from working with you over summer school. Um, we have a lot of students who really can't control their behavior. Our, our children, they live more from their, from their amygdala. Their, their prefrontal cortex is not fully developed until they're about 25. So um, by teaching our kiddos these strategies, it helps them learn how to be less reactive and come from a place more of calm and using those tools to navigate their environment. So these are the zones of regulation. I shared this with you the first time we were together. And we've got the blue zone. This is a rest area, or this is actually, you know, when our amygdala is hijacked. We're in this blue zone when we feel sad or we feel upset or hurt, tired. We're in the green zone. That means that our amygdala is not hijacked and we're in a calm, happy state. You feel happy, excited, calm, proud. If you're in the yellow zone, you're starting to notice, you know, how your body is feeling and maybe, uh-oh, I need to go take a few deep breaths so that I can check back in. If you're feeling nervous or surprised or confused, or even if you're feeling silly, because sometimes if you're feeling silly, it can tip over into, you know, being more aggressive or yelling or mad or angry. It's, you know, like little guys, they're trying to control all those emotions, even big guys too, actually. Um, but we're trying to, trying to learn how to identify when we're feeling any of these things so that we can tap into our breath or tap into the tools that we have to help us regulate our emotions. And I'm not saying that it's not okay to be mad or yell or angry or feel sad. What I, want, what I want us to learn how to do is to notice what those feelings are, being able to identify them, and then being able to use, use our tools um, of calming our body, calming our mind, calming our breath to help us regulate those emotions. So oftentimes, People who are in the blue zone are feeling lonely or isolated or confused. And if they're in the red zone, you could feel angry and frustrated, unable to express yourself. And here's a picture of someone who's in the green zone. When you're in the green zone, you're feeling joy, you're feeling peace, you're feeling love, and you're able to come from a place of being, of responding versus reacting.
So the power to be calm isn't about avoiding every kind of stressful emotion. It's about, it's about being resilient and learning how to, how to cope or how to deal with those or noticing so that you can, you can bring your brain to a calm, relaxed state. Um, this is a really important tool to be able to, to practice for ourselves and to be able to teach others. So resilience doesn't mean that you're happy all the time, but it does mean that you have the energy and the mindset to, to cope. And when you're in the blue zone or you're in the red zone, it takes a lot of energy. So it really zaps your vitality and your strength. So this little guy looks pretty happy, super cute. Um, what I want to talk about here is the more that we can practice um, bringing our mind to a state of calm, the, we increase the neurochemicals and the neurotransmitters in our brain, and it increases our endorphins so that we can have improved mood and improved memory. So if you notice when you are um, very stressed out, um, I personally forget things if I'm, if I'm overwhelmed or, or you know, in, in that heightened state of stress for too long. I forget to do things, I have to write everything down, I snap at my children, I snap at my husband. Um, I always put on a happy face for everybody else, but in those, the people who are closest to me, I may lash out more. So it's, it's if I'm feeling that way and I'm noticing when I'm gonna snap, I just say, guys, I need five minutes or I need to take five if, if, if it's being too demanding. And then I'm modeling, checking in with my breath and then modeling how to regulate myself so that I can then share that tool with my, my kiddos. Okay, friends, I think we did this one last week. So what I would like everybody to do is to stand up. All right, I think I got this out. So what I want for you to do is, if you were sitting for that little while, shake out your legs, shake out your hands. We're going to do some balance so that we can work on um, creating a little stress on the body, but we're also going to work on keeping connected with our breath so that we don't get too frustrated. If you need something to help you balance, you can have a table next to a table. You could use the wall, you could use the chair, whatever it is that you need. So on an inhale, raise your right hand and then put your left leg back and touch your toes on the floor. Feel down through your standing leg, which is your right leg. See if you can feel rooted to the earth. And take your right hand and touch your left knee. Inhale, bring your leg back, arm up. Exhale, touch. Inhale, reach back and up. Exhale, hand to your knee, touch. Breath in, reach back. Breath out, make that connection. Two more, inhale, reach. Exhale, touch. Last one, breathe in. Exhale, touch. Inhale, arm up, leg down. I don't know about you guys, but my right calf is a little tense from gripping the ground. Now we're gonna switch sides. So left hand goes up this time, right leg back. I'm using my, my elbow kind of as a rudder. Okay, so breathe in, exhale, touch. Left hand to right knee. Breathe in, reach up, leg back. Exhale, left hand, right knee. Inhale, get long. Exhale, contract and touch. Breathe in. And breathe out. Touch. Left hand reaches, right leg goes back. Left hand touches, right knee. 
Inhale, extend. Exhale, touch. One more time. Breathe in. Breathe out, touch. Inhale, plant your feet. Bring your hands up overhead. Exhale, shake it out. Shake out your legs. Shake out your feet. Shake out your hands. All right. So just notice how you're feeling now. Do you feel an increased amount of energy? Just from doing that simple exercise, does your heart beat a little bit faster? Yeah. Notice how you were feeling if you were a little bit wobbly, maybe your balance wasn't there today. Did you get frustrated? Did you get mad? Or did you respond by laughing it off? Was it a big deal? Was it not a big deal? Just notice how you respond and how you react. So I like Aquaman too. I don't know if I told you guys this yet, but he was all about harnessing that power together, right? What does calm feel like? When you, when you harness the power of calm, what does your body feel like? Are your breaths short and shallow? Are your breaths long and deep? Another thing that you can do to harness the power of calm is to take three to five minutes away from whatever's, whatever's stressing you out at that moment. Another tool that you can use is a body scan. I don't know about you, but I've been having some um, trouble sleeping. So if I'm feeling overwhelmed or I'm worried about too many things that are going on, um, I keep waking up, keep waking up, keep waking up. So a way to help relax your body is to do a body scan um, and slowly relax all those muscle groups in your body. And uh, I'm gonna demo this at the end. We'll get to it. We've done this every time we've met. You can take a mindful moment um, to harness the power to be calm. Close your eyes, check in with your breath, right? And just take a moment to just be and feel. Harnessing the power of calm, um, it's important to notice your heart rate and your breath. You can listen to soothing music. You can also practice self-compassion. So notice, notice how you talk to yourself in your, in your brain, right? Notice if you can be kind to yourself like you're kind to others. I don't know about you guys, but I'm probably my harshest critic. And it's, it's, it's hard changing that inner voice. But if I notice that I'm being really harsh with myself, I pause and I think, would I say this to my husband? Same thing. Would I say this to my best friend? Would I say what I'm saying to myself to my children? The answer is probably no. So if I can't, if I'm not going to say that to other people, I need to have that compassion and that, that kindness and develop the self-love, right? being kind to, to me, to here and now. Um, but it takes practice changing that inner critic and that inner voice. But by practicing that compassion with yourself, you can harness that power to be calm. We're gonna do another balancing um, pose. So go ahead, everybody, let's stand back up. All right, I think everybody can see my whole body. So this activity is called stork, or this pose is called stork. So again, we're gonna feel our feet on the earth. Place your feet about hip width distance. So I see some of you are like this. Your hips are not that big. Go ahead and bring it back in. Notice hips, probably your fist can go between your toes. That's about hip width distance. Relax, put your palms next down by your side. Roll your shoulders back. Feel your feet firmly planted on the earth. If you need something to help you balance, that's okay. Have the wall near you, a chair, something, okay? So inhale, put your left hand on your left hip and exhale.
take a breath in, take your right hand and pull up your right knee. Feel your left foot firmly pressing down into the earth. We're gonna take three breaths here. Inhale. Exhale. One more breath in and a breath out. Now on the inhale, bring your right knee out to the side. Exhale. I'm starting to feel a little bit wobbly and that's okay. Take a breath in and a breath out. Breathing in and breathing out. Inhale, bring it back forward and exhale, release it down. Shake it off, shake that leg out. Maybe jump around, do a little happy dance. Okay, we're gonna go to the other side. Okay, so this time, right hand, right hip. And let's just get settled here. Take a breath in and a breath out. Breath in, exhale, left hand, left knee. This side's a little bit more wobbly for me. I don't know about you. Breathing in and breathing out. If you fall out, that's okay. Just come right back. Notice your thoughts. Take a breath in. Exhale, open up to the side. Woo! Breath in. And breath out. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale, bring your knee forward. And exhale, release it down. Breath in. And breath out. Inhale, sweep your arms up and reach. Exhale, we're going to calm by doing a forward fold. Bend your knees, drop your head. Just feel that stretch release on your back. Your hands may not touch the ground and that's okay. Loosen your neck, shake your head out. Shake your head yes to possibility. Shake your head no, I will not talk bad to myself. Take another breath here. And exhale, release. Slowly come up to stand, releasing your, or coming up one vertebrae at a time. Shake your shoulders out. And let's get comfortable. So now what we're going to get ready to do is guided rest and what I would like for you to be able to do is find a space where you can lay down and get comfortable. If you don't have a place where you are where you can lay down, it's okay to sit in your chair. Just feel your feet firmly planted on the earth. If you're laying down on the ground, you may want to prop something beneath your knees or underneath your knees, you may want to put your feet on the ground and maybe bend your knees in towards each other. Just get as comfortable as you can. Relax your shoulders. So as you're lying down on the floor, take your feet apart, turn your palms up, face the ceiling. Close your eyes if you can. If you're seated, maybe look down at your lap, relax your hands in your lap, not holding on to anything, and close your eyes. Take a breath in and a breath out. Put your attention on your forehead. Feel your forehead relax. Put your attention on your eyes. Feel your eyes relax. Put your attention on your cheeks and your jaw. 
Move it from side to side. Feel your cheeks and your jaw relax. Put your attention on your neck. Feel your neck relax. Put your attention on your shoulders and feel your shoulders relax. Put your attention on your elbows. Feel your elbows relax. Take your attention to your wrists. Feel your wrists relax. Put your attention on the palms of your hands. Feel the palms relax. Put your attention on your fingers. Feel your fingers relax. Put your attention on your back. Feel where your back touches the floor or the chair and feel it relax. Put your attention on your belly. And notice how the breath moves your belly softly up and down. Put your attention on your hips. Feel your hips relax. Notice your legs. Release the energy in your legs. Noticing your knees. Relax your knees. Notice your ankles. Feel your ankles relax. Notice your feet and your toes. Feel them relax. Bring your awareness to your breath. Notice where you feel the breath in your body. Maybe you're noticing it in your nostrils. Maybe you feel it in your chest. Maybe you feel it in your belly. See if you can get really quiet. Maybe you'll even feel your heart beating inside your body. Breathing in, breathing out. Notice the sounds in the room, the sounds in your space. Slowly start to wiggle your fingers and your toes. Take a deep breath in and stretch your arms overhead. And as you exhale, relax. If you're on your back, roll over to your favorite side. And everybody bring your hands around your arms. Give yourself a big squeeze and a big hug. Feeling gratitude for this body. Feeling gratitude for this moment. Knowing that you did a really great job and some good work here, taking care of yourself. Gently open your eyes. Push yourself back up to a seat.